All right. And either way, is this about Apple or is this about something more? Let's uh, let's turn to Michael Farr. Will any company doing business with China potentially be at risk, Michael? I mean, we talk about stocks like Starbucks. We talk about Nike. I mean, these are a couple of, of underperformers lately. Um, what, what would you say is the significance of this news, if any, for your average investor? Yeah. Uh, so we saw that, right? We've seen uh, China make a lot of these uh, companies political. Yum Brands started Yum Brands China. Chris Campbell was the CFO, our general counsel, uh, whose idea it was to set, a, set up a separate Chinese version with Chinese board members of Yum Brands to try and avoid some of these political ping pong games uh, back and forth. You know, a Apple's under pressure. Other companies could be under pressure. We put Huawei under pressure and TikTok under pressure. So we're becoming political with some of these investment companies. When you back out and take a look at Apple, we've seen these sort of hiccups over the years. 2018 and 2019, we saw Apple pull back from July to July a full 20 percent, rally back up to even. So it was about dead money for the year. But since 2018, Apple's up 200 and some odd percent. Uh, 2018, 2019. So uh, this is a company be very hard for me to bet against. I've owned it a long time. $2.76 trillion in market cap with a new product release coming out. 8% of the S&P 500. Portfolio managers have to bet against the whole country if they're going to go blank in Apple. Dan Niles is a much more courageous guy than I am. <laughs> So let me let me turn back to you, Steve, if I might. You say that uh, Apple's revenue total is 19, 18 percent from China. D depending on the year and the quarter. What, but yeah, what roughly. percentage of that is represented by these government phones or uh, state owned enterprise <laughs> yeah. phones that may now be banned? That's tough to really pick out. Uh, Tony Saganagi uh, had a note out, uh, I don't know, a couple hours ago. Third, actually. Is it a quarter? Yeah, is it it's a, a, it, it, it's guesswork at yeah, this point. Guesswork. Yeah, and yeah. you know, people are making estimates all over the place. No one really knows. That's so, that's the bottom line. So, Michael, would you? You're inclined to hold the stock you have. Would you buy more here as this as the price dips a little bit after a nice run up so far this year? I might, Tyler. I buy things on a on a on a on a pullback, of course. But if you think about this stock up 200 percent or even up 36 percent year to date. You sell that stock, you've got to pay capital gains of you're, you're going to lose 10 percent of your gains already this year. And then you've got to find a company better than Apple for the long term. You're going to find a better CEO than Tim Cook. I mean, Apple is ultimately the world's most valuable gatekeeper for its most affluent users of iPhones. And I think for the longer term, for me, I'm going to have a position here. I wouldn't sell it. And yes, on weakness, I'd certainly add to it. And I would also note that, uh, again, that t referring back to Saganagi's note, after an iPhone event, typically shares go a little bit down, you know, True. the buy the rumor, yes. the sell the news. Yes. So that's something else to watch for. Yeah, Michael, let me just kind of put this in context. Well, Apple's probably the biggest stock, you know, it was at three trillion in market cap, maybe just shy of that uh, in the whole market. So it does feel like a bellwether. It feels like a bellwether for the S&P, which, as we know, has been over uh, represented in terms of the gains this year by the magnificent seven. And it, it, it's a bellwether in terms of the relationship between the U.S. and China, I think. I, I think that's an excellent point. It's a bellwether uh, for our text and certainly for our relationships with China. So it could come under fire. And I'd go back to that 2018 trading year from July to July, where the stock went down 20 percent and came back 20 percent. I don't think you wanted to sell it. Now, if you're Dan Niles and you can short it and get back in it and you and you're not have it in your retirement, you know, part of your long term retirement strategy, then that's a different way to invest. I think as a long term investor, when something's 8 percent of the S&P 500 that has the execution history that Apple has in place, the numbers, the cash on the balance sheet, it's very difficult to say you're not going to be an owner of this stock. 